So hi, and welcome back to our Spotlight series. So today I have Manifa with me, who is a Liverpool student. Um, she did the gateway course into medicine and she's just started her first year of the five year section. So hi Manifa, thank you so hi. much for giving your time today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so you've had quite a really interesting route into medicine, a couple of qualifications under your belt there. <laughs> Are you able to Tell us a bit more about that. Sure. So um, I am a mature student, obviously, mature medics. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so my first degree was in social psychology um, mm -hmm. and I graduated in 2015 now. So a few mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I actually did the um, graduate program, Teach First. So I trained with Teach First to become a teacher. Um, I was then teaching for six years um, I then did a within Teach First. I did um, a postgraduate diploma in leadership because I kind of wasn't sure if I wanted to go into leadership in education, mm -hmm. um, and then I just decided like I I kind of just didn't want to, um, and then yeah, and then I applied for medicine, and here I am. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. So when you did your Teach First, was there particular kind of subjects you were you were doing the qualification for? So I did primary school so you then do like a bit of everything I think for me I like the idea I really like building rapport with people and I think mm -hmm. in primary school you see the same kids all day every day you get to know their families mm -hmm. um, and something that I didn't necessarily like about secondary school was that you had like six classes a day mm -hmm. you then only see their parents at parents evening whereas like like I had my parents numbers you know what I mean like with text like I'd see how their kids were or emailed or whatever so mm -hmm. I actually just preferred like that a little little bit more so yeah I did mm -hmm. primary school yeah and so you sound like you enjoyed that part of the job so what made you think that staying in teaching wasn't really something that you'd like to do so in all honesty um I had thought about medicine for a while like when I was mm -hmm. younger um but then I kind of you know as you get older you I kind of picked the subjects that I liked I didn't have that like forward thinking to be like okay well if I want to become a doctor I then need to do these A-levels or mm -hmm. things like that I kind of just picked what I liked at the time um and then it's not until you're then older you realize okay well it seems as though certain doors are closed for you because mm -hmm. of the path that you took um but then obviously with a bit of research and things like that you realize okay well like maybe I can do this so it wasn't that I fell out of love with teaching or anything like that because I still, for example, like teach in the summer term because obviously uni's finished quite early. So I still supply teach. I still tutor pretty much most evenings. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, I thought I wanted to give medicine a go. I actually wanted to, mm -hmm. to do it really. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and thinking about when you first decided to pursue medicine, how, what was the process involved in that? So for me, I had to then at that age, so I was 27 at the time, mm -hmm. I then started to think more strategically and more like logically rather than when I was like 17, 18. Um, I then started to think, okay, well, if I do want to become a doctor, what like what does the route look like for me? Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, most unis want science A levels and my A levels aren't in science, they're all in like humanities subjects. Mm -hmm. So that was my first thing I then had to think about do I really want to go back to studying a level sort of like by myself when I quickly realized the answer was no mm -hmm. um so then I thought okay well I'm going to apply for courses that do foundation years for me I didn't want to do an access course there's nothing wrong with access courses mm -hmm. at all um but I just wanted the stability of knowing that actually if I did a course a six-year course that I was then going to be there for six years rather than doing the year somewhere and then having to apply and go through that process separately um but I think access courses are amazing but just for me that wasn't something that I thought would fit with me at the time mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and I think it's really important to talk about because like you said you think you get boxed in as you make choices and you go down paths whereas yeah. actually there's not you know uh loads of different options but there are different options so you can choose to take a levels privately um, yeah. you can choose an access course or yeah. you, there are courses with a gateway year that yeah. 
all designed to set you up with some knowledge before starting the main course. A hundred percent. And I think as well, when you do like a specific course, they know what their medical program looks like. They know mm-hmm. what their curriculum looks like. They know if you have early clinical um, contact, they know if it's a spiral curriculum, they know all of those things. So mm-hmm. actually what they then teach you on that foundation year really does set you up for what's going to come up in year one rather than something that's a bit more general um, and not targeted at one uni specifically yeah um so what did the process look like looking for gateway courses are there quite a few out there there are um I was really surprised about the like the the fact that all of them wanted something really different so with medical courses it's like it's all kind of the same whereas with the foundation years or slash gateway years I was actually really surprised so some of them for example still wanted you to actually have science and um sorry biology or chemistry a levels Mm -hmm. um but they for example would say that you could have say bbb or do you see what i mean so uh, like grades that are slightly lower um some of them would say okay you need to have this but then you need to have something else as well so Mm -hmm. you know the type of the area you live in or the type of school you went to something like that um so obviously i had to discard all of those because i just didn't have those a levels Mm -hmm. um so i then looked for ones that put quite a big emphasis on the other skills that you could bring because my take on it was at the time okay no I don't have those science a levels but there are so many other like experiences and so many other skills that I can bring to medicine and you know to the medical profession and so I looked at unis actually that that focused on that so then that's how I sort of like narrowed mine down um I mean I did pick one that like looking back on it I'm like why did you even apply there <laughs> like this, you yeah. don't even fit the criteria but I think yeah. you do kind of panic because you're kind of like oh, I really want to do this and because I was in a full-time job as well you have to resign by certain points do you get what I mean so you have to you kind of have to know sort of like what you're doing um but yeah that's that was my process I kind of just looked at it really strategically where could I apply to where would I be more likely to get accepted to um and then as I said I had that rogue one that yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I think sometimes though you the lead up feels quite long and you're doing all this research and then as you get closer and closer to the application mm. you kind of like oh I'll, I'll do this and you're like oh, okay that was um yeah, yeah interesting choice um, yeah you're kind of like what why like yeah. <laughs> why did you do that yeah. hmm. I think as well you've got four choices you put so much into the application that yeah. sometimes just making a completely clinical judgment is hard because yeah. you know you put a lot into it and you get once a year to apply and um, I think yeah, Airy, isn't you're it? forgiven for making sometimes rogue choices I know the good thing about foundation courses actually is I actually got five choices um oh, okay. yeah and I didn't know that because I thought yeah. that you only got four um and I actually initially thought it was a mistake but I, I think it's just because they're not straight up med- medicine courses I think mm-hmm. that you then get that extra choice um and I think that kind of leads was one of the reasons why I picked this rogue one because I had four mm-hmm. that I kind of like thought about and then well I had three that I really thought about one that I was kind of like Meh, we'll give it a go and mm-hmm. then another one that I was just like oh I didn't know I had five I'm just gonna pick it, and then yeah. I just picked it. <laughs> yeah yeah um so then you were saying that you were looking at courses that seem to kind of value different experiences and more for the humanities did you feel like in the process and perhaps like interviews that you got to actually show off the skills you had yeah definitely so um in my um so I had my one interview with Liverpool because I did get an interview from another course but I declined it because Mm -hmm. I thought when I looked at it again I didn't want to do it Mm -hmm. um so with my interview in Liverpool they did ask questions that were quite general um you know it's just your typical um competency questions so like can you tell me a time where you showed blah 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 um and it was quite good because it wasn't just specifically like in you would have to use hospital examples. Mm-hmm. So I was really able to draw on, you know, my teaching experiences or, mm-hmm. you know, when I've led like youth clubs and things like that. Because, mm-hmm. like, as I said before, like lots of those skills are transferable. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them kind of like threw me and was just like, yeah, but in the medical profession, mm-hmm. how have you? And then I just 
I think you just have to be really confident. And I just said, you know, as you can see from my experience, I don't have a whole range of clinical experience. However, um, and then you would kind of, I kind of just swung it back like that because I didn't want it to be, I wasn't going to lie and say, oh yeah, actually I did yeah. this when I, I didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's sometimes what can throw people. I think I see all the time people say, I can't, I couldn't possibly get into medicine because, mm-hmm. you know, I've not had clinical experience or I've not shadowed anyone. And I think, it's not just about that. It's about the skills that you have and how is that transferable into the, Mm -hmm. not just being a doctor, but in the healthcare profession, like how would that help you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think being confident in what those skills bring, you know, being able to communicate with people, um, you know, I think managing a class of primary school children is, uh, (laughs) a huge challenge and you know, um you've got safeguarding you've got responsibility yeah. you've got to be engaging though and you've got to it's a huge balance of skills yeah 100 percent mm-hmm. um <laughs> did you have to do any entrance exams for yeah so I took the UCAT because mm-hmm. of the other unis that I applied to mm-hmm. um but I will be very honest like I did not prepare for it I mm-hmm. I remember I was like oh I think I've missed all of the dates and then I took like the last date that there was and I Mm -hmm. think I'd booked it like two weeks prior I didn't really know what it involved I rocked up and I got an average score I mean that average score Mm -hmm. really surprised me because I I was shocked did you get what I mean but Mm -hmm. the score other than it being better than I thought it would it wasn't surprising because I had I didn't even have any books like Mm -hmm. I did no preparation I kind of because I was working full-time as well I kind of Mm -hmm. just thought oh like I'll get around to it and then before I knew it it was we were on that day um Mm -hmm. but luckily for me (laughs) um Liverpool you don't have to do an entrance exam like it's just it's just a panel interview so Mm -hmm. um yeah I just did the interview basically Mm -hmm. (laughs) And was that, this, is that the same, do you know, for their kind of standard five-year course or? So I think for um, the five years, if you, um, I think it depends. I think if you're a graduate applying for the five-year course, I think you need to do mm-hmm. GAMSA. I'm not 100%, okay. yeah, but okay. then I think everyone else would do UCAT, I, I think. Yeah. But mm-hmm. you do the rest of them. You obviously do have to do some kind of, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Um, so you're at Liverpool now mm-hmm. how how is the course so what is the structure of the the first year so yeah so I've just started my first year so um it's been good so far a lot mm-hmm. of information um so Liverpool is a spiral curriculum okay um which seems quite good so I think you just do a little bit each year you just go into a bit more detail each mm-hmm. year in a way it's quite good because you can't like when I did my degree before, if I didn't understand something, I was just like, oh, I'm not gonna, I just won't answer that question because they were essay questions. Mm -hmm. You knew you were gonna get an essay question on every single thing that had come up. So if you had 10 topics, I would be like, I'm just gonna revise two really, really well. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Do you see what I mean? And then just maybe a few more in a bit of detail. Whereas I can't do that with this degree. Like you have to, from what I'm learning, tackle things head on at like at the time. so that seems really good. Um, Liverpool's good because you do have early clinical contact as well, which is one of the reasons why I liked Liverpool too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, yeah, I, I really enjoy interacting with people. So I think I'm definitely going to really enjoy that, the clinical side of medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it's, it does seem really good, um, to be honest with you. The cohort is quite large, <laughs> which yeah, makes okay. a change from the degree that I did before because there were 28 of us in our year oh wow that's tiny yeah it was really small so the lecturers knew us really really well um we got on with them really well we knew everyone in the cohort really well so it makes Mm -hmm. a change going from 20 I think they said there's about 340 in the year this year so yeah that is huge (laughs) yeah big difference big difference (laughs) um so would you call it like a year zero then the gateway year yeah exactly yeah. So that was okay. year zero and now this is mm-hmm. year one mm-hmm. um the year zero is really small so there's about 30 year zeros for okay. because the year zero is actually quite a bit broad you can do medicine um you can do dentistry veterinary science mm-hmm. um I think radiography there's quite a few but in the campus we were in it was only vet- veterinary science medicine dentistry 
and dental therapists. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was only about 30 of us all together. And then, yeah, we've just moved on basically. So that's quite nice because I still know, even though I didn't meet any one last year because it was all online, mm-hmm. you still know that there are people similar ages to you um, who are experiencing the same things that you're experiencing. Now, obviously mingling with people who are mm-hmm. like 10 years <laughs> younger than me (laughs) so did you find that that was kind of the that the people on the gateway course because I think like you said it can be um if you come from a different background but also I think they can give um lower offers if you've come from a levels but haven't quite hit those yeah a star straight a star Mm -hmm. grades um so was it was it a mix so to be honest the majority of people on the year zero course had come from something else they'd had Mm -hmm. careers doing something else um you know I one of my friends like she was in worked in HR like really successful within HR um one of my other friends he was an actor really successful actor Mm -hmm. um someone else was another one of my friends was a teacher there's quite a few different um backgrounds and I think that was quite nice because you didn't necessarily feel like like you you were missing out on anything or there was that understanding that people knew okay well you might not know this yet because you've not done it before rather than you know you've just missed the boundaries I think they made that quite clear that actually that wasn't a course for people who had done their A-levels but had got you know grades that were lower than what the typical medicine offer would be and I think that was quite good because I I knew from the beginning I didn't want to be in a class because if someone's got a B, a B is a, a fantastic grade to still get for A levels. If you've got say three Bs, you're going to know much more than someone who's not done, mm-hmm. you know, A level or chemistry, uh, biology or chemistry A levels before. Mm-hmm. Um, so at least this way we're kind of kind of on like an even playing field, I would say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I we talked about all those other skills you're going to bring, and I think you're when you once you get onto placement and clinical contact, they're going to be great. Did you get to use them at all in in the kind of year zero? Do you feel like how was the teaching? Was it quite collaborative? So I would say no, but to be honest, because I I don't know if it normally is, but it just wasn't last year because I was mm-hmm. like, it was the like as you know, like COVID was it was bad (laughs) last year so we didn't even get to go on like I have no idea where that campus for Liverpool like is I never went to that Mm -hmm. I never went there um so I didn't really I didn't really meet anyone Mm -hmm. um and I think that then made it quite hard um the structure is pretty good so you do have biology and chemistry um you do what's relevant to medicine so in biology you don't do anything to do with plants or anything like that um it, it is all pretty relevant um and then the chemistry is, I guess, as relevant as it can be. <laughs> um, but you do do things like acids and bases and buffers and things like that, which obviously like really important. Um, but then you do other things which are quite interesting. So we had um, uh, something like a ref- like reflective element. So we had to sort of do like reflective pieces of writing, which obviously you will have to do as a doctor anyway. Um, we delivered a health campaign. Um, and then sort of analyze that so that was quite useful as well Mm -hmm. Um, yeah so I think those bits like when we had to deliver our presentations I was really comfortable doing that because obviously as a teacher you are talking for literally about six hours a day Mm -hmm. to a group of people so I was Mm -hmm. the presentations I was quite comfortable with Um, it was more the science elements that I was uh, that I wasn't sure about but actually like once I started I was fine and Mm -hmm you kind of like learning is all kind of the same isn't it like although I know different subjects different things would work better you kind of know the principles are the same in terms of if you don't know something you need to put in a bit more work or you need obviously with your space repetition and your active recall like that's going to be the mm-hmm. same whatever subject you're doing um so actually that was okay and I found that because I was used to teach anyway yeah. I do think that helped me a little bit because I could like ask myself the questions I would ask the children I can kind of ask myself and I would Mm -hmm. kind of not be shy to be like "Mm, you didn't get that or if I was in someone's class right now they'd be like "Mm, you don't understand that (laughs) so that I think helped me quite a lot and I was like Mm -hmm. that again but yeah (laughs) yeah you know those faces where you're like do you get this and there's that yeah (laughs) slow nod of yeah I sure do Uh, you can spot that a mile out 
exactly <laughs> yeah yeah it takes a lot though to I find I still now go over the things that I like and I'm quite comfortable with mm. even though the time you really should spend is on the things that you, you don't like or you don't know yeah <laughs> but I just go back to you know a bit of bit of biochem <laughs> like you know this you know like, oh, it's nice it's comfortable you know so it yeah. is hard to call out you know and face the bits that you're finding more difficult yeah no mm-hmm. definitely but it, you hopefully the benefits you'll reap the benefits <laughs> of course yeah long-term gain um <laughs> and so space repetition you know this I it was quite new to me when I came back to medicine the kind of I suppose smarter way to learn mm-hmm. was or were those methods that you either had taught in school or that you'd used for your previous degree so I think thinking about it yes in terms of teaching I, I'll be honest like I didn't know necessarily like what it was called um but obviously because you work with such young children like you do have to be quite dynamic with mm-hmm. what you're doing but they're also incredibly forgetful so but I think as well you don't ever want to upset a child. You don't want to make them feel that they don't know something. So there are really subtle ways of, of like putting those things in there actually, which can really help them. Um, so yeah, I think naturally, as I said, I wouldn't know what it was called, but I think naturally you we would have to teach like that in order to get the most out of the children. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think also be really aware of learning styles because you know, you have a lot of children in the class who are visual learners or kinesthetic learners or audio learners and things like that. So I, when I came back to uni, I was very keen to find out what my learning style was. And I think when I did my first degree and then I did my postgrads as well, I, I think I just did what everyone else did. Everyone mm-hmm. else spent loads of time writing things down. So I did the same thing because they all did it. Um, whereas I think now I'm, I'm a lot more confident in, you know, just and a lot more secure in myself so even if I do something that doesn't work I know that that doesn't mean that like I'm stupid or whatever it's just that actually that just doesn't work for you um, mm-hmm. and I'm less way less concerned about like what other people think or if other people think I've grasped the material really quickly like that mm-hmm. genuinely doesn't concern me anymore um, but I do think that like teaching has really helped me with that because I can see I see every day how different people learn or how quickly people pick things up or how slowly people pick things up but actually the end goal is generally nine times out of ten the same they still Mm -hmm. end up learning and understanding the content so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think it's quite a high pressure situation you know medicine you're coming in either from a you know quite a high achieving background or you just generally work so hard to get there I think there is a lot of pressure to pick everything up and and know everything but it's just it's not possible it takes time you know it's a six-year course you know you don't need to know everything in the first uh first day no but I think that's interesting because you I think you're used to before kind of knowing everything I've definitely had people on 18 year olds on my course being like oh but in A levels I knew I had to know this 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 and this and therefore I would get an A star if I had this 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 and this Mm -hmm. this is this will be my result but it's not necessarily the same um with medicine I think I think that's one thing that also I will find I think a bit harder because again as a teacher like I would tell that we had we would have sometimes things called success criteria. so we would mm-hmm. literally at the beginning like if a child didn't know how to do something like hey we need to have this we need to have this we need to have this obviously they can have their own flair and their own spin on it but fundamentally we need this 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 and this mm-hmm. whereas and therefore your work will do you know what I mean like be what I'm looking for yeah. whereas mm-hmm. now it's it's not that there are so i just before I was speaking to you I was like putting all my like um learning objectives for the foundation block and there's like Mm -hmm. 35 different lectures and then within each lecture there's like six or seven different objectives Mm -hmm. and I'm like okay (laughs) Mm -hmm. how am I going to cover literally everything obviously Mm -hmm. within some of them some of them are quite like not basic but you know you you know them and then others Mm -hmm. you do know you're going to have to spend a bit more time on I think that's going to be the hardest thing for me just understanding and knowing I'm not going to know absolutely everything (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah and within those lists of learning objectives some of them are just like know about the liver yeah (laughs) yeah, okay sure (laughs) (laughs) 
yeah it's uh, <laughs> I think I've definitely found that just starting placement there is no yeah it's kind of you have a like skills maybe to sign off and you have a general aim but you know on when you break it down to a day-to-day level yeah it's just learn so learn the feel for this you know this speciality but as someone who likes a a list and a plan it's oh very yeah. vague um yeah yeah that's another thing that I've struck like we've just got our timetable and it is not the same every week mm-hmm. and I'm literally like how can I plan my life like obviously this is my second degree so I don't get like fund like all the funding that and someone yeah. if their first degree so I have to work but I can't work if I don't know do you know what I mean like what my hours yeah. are and that makes it incredibly difficult because last year I could just say to all of my parents or the kids I was tutoring I can do this 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 and this and it was fine mm-hmm. I say like that all year whereas now it's like up and down every single week which is not mm-hmm. very helpful because I like consistency the kids I tutor like consistency so I think I I don't think I even expected that to be the case if I'm being honest I did think mm-hmm. it would be even if you didn't have the same lectures sort of like every week I still thought the timetable would be pretty much the same and then maybe the different subjects would take up those time slots but I didn't mm-hmm. think there would be this much variation mm-hmm. yeah and I think it's it was something that I didn't even see as a problem when I was younger because you just uni is just your bubble and yeah. anything that moved around within it was it just felt like that was okay whereas you know, similar to you I have to work alongside it and I understand that medicine is my main commitment and that mm-hmm. you know I can't begrudge giving my time to it but at the same time I do need to balance other things and you know things change last minute and I think especially going to a course that potentially has mostly undergraduates it's not problems that university are maybe sensitive to or aware of as much I I think think so too because especially I think the difficulty of of being a mature not even just a mature student a graduate on an undergraduate course already there are things I'm like I definitely this is beneficial if you've not been to uni before Mm -hmm. (laughs) if you have been to uni before learning how to reference or how to write an abstract Mm -hmm. I understand that this is something I've signed up to because it's an undergraduate course but I but sometimes I'm just like oh if only I just had a bit more time so I could do the other thing that I need Mm -hmm. to do um but I understand it's not mix and match and I think with a lot of other degrees you can pick your modules can't you whereas Mm -hmm. with medicine like you're you're you have to do these certain things Mm -hmm. um so that's been something else that's been quite interesting. And I, but like you, obviously you can't begrudge, you know, the degree for having to spend mm-hmm. your time doing it. But um, yeah, I think it's interesting. I think in the future, it'd be interesting to see whether unis do kind of adapt it. Like, do you need to do certain mm-hmm. things if, you know, like obviously I know that you've, you know, got your PhD and do you get what I mean? Like on Mm -hmm. an undergrad, like some people have got their masters or whatever, there are going to be so some things Mm -hmm. actually like without in the, in want for a better word, like it seems like a bit of a waste of time because you know Mm -hmm. how to do that. Um, Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting just to see like if that changes um, or if it's just a blanket, okay, you're a graduate. So go on the graduate entry (laughs) program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) I'm just as this, spaces on graduate courses are so oh few and I think medicine is you know one of the more likely careers that people might switch to later on so I think there is a mismatch in mm. the, like the the candidates available and that would be great at doing medicine and the spaces available um you know I completely understand that the med school need to be happy that they're yes. graduating you to a, with you know experience and knowledge in yeah. certain areas and I suppose it would take as much time for them or more time for them to individually to tailor modules if you say oh and I can do the this a hundred percent a hundred percent I know it's not necessarily feasible <laughs> um but yeah it, I, I don't have the answers obviously no, but no. it's just interesting to because these are things that I didn't consider if you mm-hmm. get what I mean I knew it was a completely different subject obviously I know I've not mm-hmm. studied medicine before but I I don't know but I kind of forgot it was an undergraduate course so I kind of forgot that yes okay whilst 99% of what I'm going to be learning is obviously going to be completely new there are going to be some things which naturally 
when you have you know you're a graduate and you've done postgraduate degrees you already know how to do mm-hmm. um so that it's, it's just it's just food for thought because yeah. I think it'll be interesting for others applying as well to also then consider um I obviously as we said that the, the spaces on the graduate entry program are very limited but I think it's just something to to, to be aware of that it mm-hmm. is still is an undergraduate course so there are mm-hmm. still going to be things that you may know how to do already but you will just have to do again mm-hmm. yeah and I think they're not so much that I found you know they kind of scattered around and um I think it extends out to the social side of it as well you know you're um it's just not the same as when you, you know move to uni for the first time and it that side takes up less time as well so it's just a different experience um I suppose it's just letting yourself enjoy it for your own experience in whatever place you are than maybe trying to compare it to what it would have been like if this was your first you know first degree or first experience living away from home or um but yeah it's different I think I still appreciate the extra time in terms of being on a five-year course and going through kind of being introduced to clinical things and having that time to get more exposure but also like you said spend so much time working that it's not that time is then also taken up with that so I think yeah you have to consider all these things and it's great to hear from personal experience Mm -hmm. um how you're finding them yeah um so could you would would you have thought of a graduate entry course because with your qualifications so do you know what I am I applied for one but mm-hmm. that was the one I was just like, yeah, why not kind of thing. Yeah. But mm-hmm. deep down, like I didn't, I did not expect to be accepted. Mm-hmm. Um, because I knew that I didn't have science A-levels, mm-hmm. I I really wanted to just get that grounding, if I'm being honest, because even just applying straight to, like I didn't, it's, it's interesting, I applied for a graduate entry course, but I didn't apply to any straight out five-year courses. Do you mm-hmm. see what I mean? Yeah. I applied for the graduate one because I had a degree, but yeah. I would not have been ready to have applied to that. I know, and I know that sounds weird because mm-hmm. the four-year one is an accelerated version of the five-year program, but mm-hmm. I just, in my head, I just thought, you've not done science A-levels before, it's not going to be a waste of time you doing a six-year programme as opposed to a five-year programme because all of this knowledge you'll be getting in in that first year, in year zero, you're going to take forward with you. And so you need to understand things well, otherwise you're not going to be able to to do very well on the course. Mm -hmm. Um, So I, in all honesty, I didn't really consider doing the graduate entry program because that's just how I thought about it. Mm -hmm. Um, And even though like a lot of people say, oh my gosh, it's six years or, you know, that's a really long time. It is a really long time, but I always compare it to, I was teaching for six years and that flew Mm -hmm. by, like it, time goes by so quickly. And I think because when you're at uni, you actually do have fair, like, unless you're, I guess, year four, year five, whatever, your holidays are fairly like, decent Mm -hmm. um so before you if you actually count the weeks you're at uni like it's not long at all Mm -hmm. um and so yeah for me I I definitely knew that I wanted to do a more extended program Mm -hmm. to be the best doctor that I can be Mm -hmm. to be honest yeah and you know it also sounds like you're still using up a lot of your skills from teaching you know you're tutoring you're working in summer so it's a kind of a different path but you're still using a lot of yeah. you know a lot of your qualifications so trying to in my head I'd use that reframing to be like it's you know it's not a complete start again no no, no not at all mm-hmm. not at all I think it is interesting because I get dms from so many like teachers saying that mm-hmm. they've like thought about it and especially a lot of science teachers and actually they already have the science knowledge mm-hmm. um but I think sometimes people are just scared or mm-hmm you know when you're older sometimes you do have more commitments Mm -hmm. because that was something I was worried about as well like with the commitments I have like can I even afford to stop working and going back to Mm -hmm. uni sometimes it's more of a practical thing or like a logistical thing like can I actually do this Mm -hmm. um so that's interesting as well because 
I didn't have Instagram before when I was applying. I started my page like after I started year zero, but actually seeing that there are so many different people out there that have come from different routes, I think is really helpful. And I think really mm-hmm. would have helped me when I was applying because then you don't feel like your path is so different to everyone mm-hmm. else's. Yeah, it's a really isolating process. Yeah. Um, you kind of reduce yourself down to you know entrance exams, you know, and numbers on a page and you know, interview yes or no. And I think, yeah. especially when you've come from a background, you've got so much experience, you feel like I've got all this oh to share, God. you know? Yeah. yeah, it's really, and then sometimes you get there and it's it's interesting because you, ha- you have all that experience, but then you could, I know you have, but you don't start again because you can mm-hmm. use it, but you kind of do start again. Yeah, so it's exactly. kind of like, oh no, like, but anyway, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember I um because I did my postgraduate at Bristol and then I stayed on to study. And one of our first labs I had demonstrated it on as a PhD student. So I'd been on the other side, I got to oh. wear the different colour lab coat, and I sat in the lab and I think I think I had to get maybe a bit of my ego in check of like, because I was like, oh, I know this practical mm-hmm. and there's no one cares. You know, you're just an oh, undergrad in a sea of undergrads. Yeah. It's and, very um, humbling, isn't it? But yeah. it's really humbling. <laughs> And it's, yeah, and it's strange how the position you're in completely changes the environment. So even putting on that different colour lab coat and being one of the demonstrators, you feel so different in that Mm -hmm. room. And then you kind of change position. And it's, it was quite, it was a really strange, it was a really strange experience. And yeah, um, you kind of have to, yeah, just no one you know you can't feel well I used to do this and you know yeah. I, it just yeah it's a change of perspective it definitely I think it's interesting though because whilst you don't want to be that person like oh before I just yeah. <laughs> like lots of the 18 year olds are, are so confused as to why you're there because they can physically see you're not 18 yeah yeah so you actually end up talking about it anyway because mm-hmm. then they're kind of like oh okay yeah. They, they're quite polite about it they're kind of like did, did you take a gap year then yeah <laughs> and then you're kind of like oh no like I worked mm-hmm. before and then they're just generally interested so you end up talking about mm-hmm. it anyway um, even though you don't want to constantly talk about it um mm-hmm. but then I think it's interesting because with the environment that we put ourselves in the fact that we are on social media mm-hmm. you do get people asking you about your backgrounds because they might see similarities between you and them so then you Mm -hmm. you end up talking about it with that as well you then do things like spotlights or the interviews you end up Mm -hmm. talking about it Mm -hmm. do you get what I mean so it's quite funny because you like like you do end up talking about it quite a bit but I think obviously the longer you spend away from what you then used to do I think it will kind of like I think I think it will fizzle out (laughs) yeah and I think once you have other things in common with people on your course you know so you go on the same placement you're in the same tutorial group that then becomes your own common ground between them so yeah that's true yeah because I think you know when it was the same as when you first started everyone says oh what a levels did you do it's kind of just that people want to find they just want to find out about you don't they they want to yeah yeah so I think it's just that maybe that version of that um yeah that's true (laughs) yeah so are you meeting people for the first time in person that you had kind of studied with in the previous year? Yeah, yeah. So actually last mm. week, Friday, quite a few of us, we just like went for some food. And that was really interesting because I'd never like physically, I'd seen some of them, but mm-hmm. most of them I'd not physically met before. Mm-hmm. But I was, I remember I was just like eating at one point and I kind of just like closed my eyes and I was like, oh, I, like, I know all their voices because we had teams mm-hmm. together like every day, but mm-hmm. you'd, we'd just obviously not physically met each other. So that was quite nice because even though I guess everyone was kind of strangers, you didn't feel like that because you did mm-hmm. feel that sense of like security because mm-hmm. you you know you knew them, you know that you had that same kind of experience with them mm-hmm. um, and now you're all in the same experience. Mm-hmm. You're experiencing the same thing, sort of like being um, on this brand new course. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And have you met many other mature medics that have joined at year one no not really I think I'm just quite unfortunate because um we have like our small because our cohort is so big like we obviously have like small teaching groups and I think there's about maybe like 15 or so per group and I don't have another mature student in my group 
um which I was a bit like no whereas like some people have like two or three Mm -hmm. um but I didn't have anyone so um, we do have like group chats and stuff for like mature mm-hmm. medics and we kind of just like laugh at ourselves because like there are some reference points like we don't understand mm-hmm. um so that's quite funny um but yeah I think it will get easier I think it will definitely get better um as you said like meeting like like meeting people and you know mm-hmm. have like having our small sessions with them and things like that like there will be more reference points Mm -hmm. and I think that will definitely get better and I think it will then just become it won't really matter like if someone's a Mm -hmm. mature student or not because Mm -hmm. yeah it would just be okay cool we're on the same course like yeah 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 like oh that's you know so and so I did placement with last yeah yeah yeah, they're from my GP yeah instead of it's like oh that's the you know the mature student it's like oh that's someone (laughs) yeah like it's just from my GP group or you know this is that so yeah yeah I think it uh everyone just becomes more familiar you, you know I think you identify just as a medic with everyone else mm-hmm. more than oh you know oh, I was a teacher or I was yeah, this 100 um, percent. and that's the thing though like as individuals we are that we are so many different things though aren't we and I think mm-hmm. that's the beauty is we can kind of like flop in and out of those different things you know mm-hmm. when you go and you do your job in the summer you quite quickly I don't know about you but I was really Mm -hmm. surprised with how quickly I then found myself like being a teacher again and Mm -hmm. just being comfortable in the classroom in front of all of those kids do you see what I mean like I was Mm -hmm. quite comfortable doing that um and I think that's the beauty of having lots of different experiences is that we can Mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah (laughs) you don't find your teacher voice like finds its way into like a like a you know what report. I'm so lucky like I don't actually think I had a teacher voice okay, I think okay, yeah. because my kid well that's what I say I'll yeah. maybe ask like some of my friends but mm-hmm. I think I was just really lucky in the sense that I feel like I'm exactly the same as a teacher as a person mm-hmm. um because one of the things I hated about school was just sometimes I just hated bossy I don't like bossy people anyway but I just hated the fact that some teachers were like really bossy or they were kind of like talked down to you so that was the first thing I kind of said to myself was I just want to be personable and the only way in my eyes I could be personable was by being myself Mm -hmm. um because it's really weird like I meet a lot of people and they're like oh like you don't seem like a teacher and I'm like okay I don't know what that means but okay mm-hmm. yeah so maybe yeah I think, I think you mean that in a nice way yeah. Yeah. yeah so I think I think that's as I said you'll have to ask like my friends or like my family mm-hmm. maybe they'll be like you definitely do have a teacher voice but yeah, I think yeah. I'm the same mm-hmm. I think I just imagine it's just harder especially with younger kids because I've done a tiny, tiny bit of um, small group teaching for, I think it was year sixes, and they just get up to just things, an idea will come into their head, and then they're just off, and you don't want to kind of squash their enthusiasm, you're like, oh, I'm not sure that's quite (laughs) what we want to be focusing on right now, Um, and then, yeah, that, yeah, it's hard not to catch yourself being like, no, so, you know mm-hmm. it's uh yeah a difficult balance because yeah. they come up with yeah some interesting crazy things yeah. but that's why I loved it and I that's also why I love primary school because yeah okay there are like exams in primary school but it's not like a GCSE it's not like an A-level so mm-hmm. you know you're not stressed it's like oh we've only got 10 minutes left I don't have time for you going on the, like time for you to go off on this tangent we need to bring it back mm-hmm. whereas like sometimes in like primary school I'd start a lesson the kids would end up talking about something else I'd get to the end of the lesson I'd be like did not even cover yeah. any of those learning objectives but you know what guys yeah. it is fine mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah I get what yeah. you mean yeah I think uh, they just don't have that um I think once especially when you go to secondary school they then start to be aware of themselves and they don't yeah. want to ask questions and you yeah. don't get that they yeah. just yeah. come out with you know real questions that put you on the spot because you're like, oh, I hadn't thought of it in that way yeah yeah, yeah um, exactly they're so they want to learn they're just so fascinated about lots of things mm-hmm. um they say anything that kind of pops into their head which yeah. is nice I think yeah. that's really nice and I think it also reminds you reminds you like not to take yourself too seriously mm-hmm. you can be having like a really bad day but you go to school and you see those 30 children and mm-hmm. they're they can't even remember if they had lunch and we've just come back from lunch like you know what I mean it's things like that it it just makes you laugh and you're just like Mm -hmm. actually yeah this is this is good you know Mm -hmm. it's not as serious as as 
like maybe you're making out like it's just relax a little bit be Mm -hmm. in the present yeah (laughs) yeah um have you got any ideas about merging the two like medicine and primary like any outreach at all or teaching sessions so one of the things I would like to do is um at some point um Mm -hmm. definitely go into schools and just talk about sort of like a career in medicine Mm -hmm. um I think it's a bit difficult because when you're in primary school like very few kids are thinking about their career or what they want to do um but they really love people coming into the school so we would have like you know paleontologists come in or like marine biologists and they love it they don't want to be a paleontologist or a marine biologist but they just Mm -hmm. love the fact that someone is so knowledgeable about what they do and actually they can then go home and tell their mum or dad or whoever looks after Mm -hmm. them what they've learned Mm -hmm. and so I would definitely love to do something like that um but I'm not I I don't sort of like know when I think it'd probably be best Mm -hmm. to maybe join like a society or something um because I know there are a few at Liverpool that do sort of like outreach work like that Mm -hmm. um I think that would be best um but yeah definitely that's definitely something that I'm interested in yeah Mm -hmm. and thinking years ahead for future Mm -hmm. specialities is paediatric something that you know no 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 absolutely not I think I think because maybe I'll feel different in like in ask me again in you know well seven years once I've done F1 and F2 but um I think because I I really do love children like I love that like I really really enjoy spending time with children I think it would be difficult having spent so much time with them when they're like at their best Mm -hmm. and on good form I think Mm -hmm. I would find it quite difficult to see them when they're so poorly Mm -hmm. um and I know that's a bit difficult because I know not anyone can, you know, become a pediatrician or mm-hmm. work in pediatrics. I know you have to have like a special, like a, a different personality. I think I would mm-hmm. enjoy it. I think I would be able to do it. I think it'd be obviously mm-hmm. incredibly hard, but I think I would struggle at the same time because I think I would just be so, it'd be hard for me just to see them like so poorly and mm-hmm. um, just knowing how vibrant, they can normally be mm-hmm. um at school like we have sometimes a lot of children who or had children who were like really poorly um having chemo things like that and it's just mm-hmm. really horrible to see because it it really just takes it out of them it's a lot of the time actually as well we saw um family dynamics kind of like break down those family mm-hmm. relationships break down as well so I think I'd find that quite hard to be honest mm-hmm. yeah no yeah. um I can pretty appreciate that any other specialities on the horizon or just so oh, I really like the idea of palliative care okay. I know I've just said that yes. <laughs> I know I've just said that I think yeah. it'd be hard looking at children that are poorly. but I think okay whilst I can appreciate that palliative care I, I think mm-hmm. all of these I think obviously because of course, I'm, of course. I'm not yeah um but I think I don't know just being able to give patients that you know I don't know I just just think it's something quite special to be able Mm -hmm. to give them or for them to feel that they still have their autonomy and they Mm -hmm. still have you know the that attention do you know do you get what I mean like I think I've been to quite a few say like hospices and actually the amount of time that doctors are able to spend with those Mm -hmm. in hospices I think are a lot is a lot more time than you know say doctors and hospitals and things like that and I've had some relatives um in hospices and I think it really makes the difference when you've got Mm -hmm. um doctors who can do their job well in a hospice Mm -hmm. I think it makes all the difference for you know those individuals in there and for those families because it's not an easy time for anyone and Mm -hmm. I can appreciate that but I think I think it's needed. I, the th- I think the thought of having someone end up in palliative care because there's nothing else for them to do, I think would, I think that overrides me thinking, okay, it might, it may be quite sad. I definitely mm-hmm. think you could really contribute a lot um, mm-hmm. to that speciality. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, palliative care, if I can 
manage it and not cry every day then Mm -hmm. I definitely think that or I really like sexual health medicine I really like the idea of that Mm -hmm. I think especially working with young children as well the amount that some of them are just so clueless and you know some of them you you get to know sort of older siblings and they you, you hear things oh you know they've gone to the clinic and they've had really awful experiences mm-hmm. you know they've been really judgmental and mm-hmm. oh, I'm never going back because and it's things like that so again I think there's a lot that could be done there as well um I mean the, what they both have in common is you can develop a rapport with <laughs> your mm-hmm. patient and I think for me that is that is key for mm-hmm. me but I mean I have I've got an open mind because mm-hmm. I've got no idea yeah <laughs> Yeah, um, I think as well, they're both specialities that, you know, there is a area of medicine for everyone and some of them yeah. have more people contact than others and yeah. that suits different people's skills. But I think you you need to be able to very openly and honestly communicate with people, which yeah. can be very difficult, especially if, you know, people are very unwell or people are maybe not so forward with wanting to share their information. So, yeah, yeah, I think you'd be an asset to either speciality oh. either <laughs> mm. so thinking about any part of the process from deciding to applying to now if you had any top tips that you've learned um that you you know want to share with anyone what would they be I would say you're doing the process mm-hmm. like it's your process it's your um experiences you know yourself the best and I think Mm -hmm. because you know yourself the best you need to be honest with yourself there is Mm -hmm. no point applying for universities that are not within reach and that does not mean that you're not going to make a fantastic doctor it doesn't mean that you're not going to thrive on the course but I think too many people are focused on you know the name of the university or where the Mm -hmm. university is I think you really have to sit down and think to yourself where can I get the best possible chance of being accepted into um and I think actually if you do that honestly then I think your the likelihood of you getting in is going to be much higher obviously it doesn't Mm -hmm. mean you're 100% going to get in but it's going to be much higher than you applying for such and such uni because your best friend wants to go there or Mm -hmm. because your favorite GP went there or whatever I think Mm -hmm. yeah be honest with yourself um and if that then means that you apply for three unis then apply for three I know that's opposite to what a lot of people (laughs) say they just say (laughs) put something down but Mm -hmm. sometimes people can hold on to rejection I think quite strongly and Mm -hmm. so I think you need you know what you're like if you're someone who really struggles with rejection don't just randomly apply for that fourth uni because you've then filled out all of the options because Mm -hmm. actually it may really affect you then getting that rejection so I think Mm -hmm. know yourself and yeah do what's best for you Mm -hmm. would be my advice (laughs) yeah yeah I think that's really helpful for people to hear um and also just the have confidence in what you bring it might not suit every yeah. uni and not every uni might appreciate what you yeah. can bring yeah. um and that's that's fine because you know they all you know they're slightly different but yeah. just because it's not you know your qualifications or your past experiences isn't something they look for doesn't mean that you won't be able to utilize them and and use them in a different place yeah a hundred percent I think that's really important as well yeah perfect well thank you so much for your time today um I think yeah this has been the first time talking about the gateway course and actually just generally talking about there's there are different options out there and um and you can use a different range of qualifications and also you can take your time like you don't just because you've got a degree doesn't mean you have to jump into um graduate entry um you can kind of just it's about doing what's right for you and what Mm -hmm. what feels suits you best so yeah really great to hear um I'll link your Instagram page below so people can find you and follow along if they want to um and yeah thank you so much for your time today no thank you for having me it's been great